Hi, I'm Dave Mergel, and this is where we talk to key influencers around the seafood sector and thought leaders across different functions around the world, all with the goal of growing seafood consumption here in North America. And for today's episode, our second episode, I really wanted to dig into e-commerce. Why? Well, because for the past few years, e-commerce has been on a constant upward trajectory, and of course, it absolutely exploded in the pandemic. For today's conversation on e-commerce, I spoke to Anderson Witherell. Anderson is behind AlaskanKingCrab.com, and he's a great example of someone in our sector who's successfully implementing consumer marketing strategies and successfully operating a business in this e-commerce space. Today's conversation with Anderson was excellent. It was filled with lots of great insights. He shared a lot of his interesting strategies with us and successful strategies with us. And I found it really, really useful and valuable. And I hope you do too. Today we have with us Anderson Witherell. Anderson is Director of E-Commerce Fulfillment and Marketing for the Fish Guys. Well, welcome and thanks for joining us today. I'm excited to talk to you because you are really a great example of someone who's embraced e-commerce well before the pandemic, uh, is executing it and seeing enormous success in the in the sector, in the category. So I'd love to talk to you and just get your thoughts on what it is you're doing and how you've uh, how you've approached this, this channel. So essentially the fish guys uh, hold a move into e-commerce fulfillment uh, three years or so back. Um, and it kind of led us down a path. So basically what I do with the fish guys is I manage our e-commerce fulfillment team. We work uh, really closely with marketing teams um, in the South as well bringing a high quality product to consumers um, nationwide is something pretty different from what we generally do. So it was a a new path. Well, and the thing is, of course, when COVID hit, there was this massive scramble to, you know, online commerce. I remember you talking about this three or four years ago. And so you, you know, you really embraced e-commerce well before it became necessary. So tell us a little bit about like, what did you see in your vision that made you want to go into e-commerce? Yeah, I think, you know, diversification of any business is the smart move, but ultimately you, you just can't ignore the, um, the tidal wave that is e-commerce, it, you know, um, spe- specifically this year, but I think, you know, in, in previous years as well, four or five years ago, you know, you see this ramp up um, where I think consumers became or started to become more comfortable with buying online. Um, and uh, started to trust it more in terms of food, right? I mean, uh, there was a time when, you know, I think a lot of uh, consumers would have said, well, I'm not sure about getting my food shipped to me. And, you know, it seems like there's not a, the connection that you might have with a purveyor that they're there physically with or with the grocery store where you can kind of see the product. Um, but over time, they became more comfortable with that. And I think, you know, companies like ours, you um, we're able to kind of gain the trust of those of those consumers, and it's the uh, the tide has risen. So all of the websites ships have risen with it, and uh, and now we just see a massive explosion. It's you know obviously prudent for businesses to diversify, be prepared for all sorts of scenarios, but you know reality is you know e-commerce is a completely different approach. It's really about marketing to the consumer, and you know, your traditional business is about marketing to the trade. So tell me a little bit about that, your consumer strategies and how that's been different for you. Yeah, I think, I think that the, the trust piece is really a major part of that, right? Um, it's about kind of proving yourself, uh, showing the consumer that not only do you have a fantastic product that stands alone, um, but that you can support it and you can back it up with, uh, you know, really good customer service and responses and kind of be there. I think a lot of the questions in that space for the consumer is, you know, okay, I'm going to spend a lot of money on this fantastic product. And then what, you know, is there a person on the other side of the line? Does it come in good shape? Um, that type of thing. So I think proving our credibility is kind of the first step. Um, and then, you know, having those repeat customers, right? So give them that experience that really wows them um, and come and brings them back for another, another shot. Like, how do you connect with your consumers? Because again, that's a totally different thing. So tell me a little bit about your consumer strategies and how you're interacting with them. Yeah. So I think, you know, probably similar to a lot of other uh, e-commerce uh, businesses, we talk to a lot of people um, on social media. 
you know, uh, this day and age, folks are on Facebook, they're on Instagram, um, and they're interacting more and more every day with with all of these platforms. Um, and it's a fantastic conduit for us to kind of share our product. Um, you know, a uh, product like, uh, for instance, Alaskan King Crab, it's not something that you can get everywhere. So kind of bringing a customer from a place where they might not have access to that, uh, showing them our world and, and the availability of the products that we have, and then, you know, allowing them to try it and make it a great experience for them. Um, it opens up a whole new um, experience for them and their family to have, say, on a special occasion. You know, you know, we are different, very different from retailers in uh, obviously a lot of ways, but in the product that we're able to keep, um, you know, as well as the service that we're able to provide in a, in a remote uh, sense. And I think, you know, you mentioned social media and obviously, you know, when you embrace e-commerce, social media has got to be a critical piece of your marketing. And in our sector, you see most producers and distributors having embraced it, but I'm not sure if anybody has a real clear strategy. So I'm interested more on, on how you approach social media. Is, is there some sort of a narrative you've, you've put together or is it about bombarding um, consumers and just trying to you know, connect with them multiple times, repeatedly in multiple different ways. I mean, tell me a little bit about your social strategy. You, you definitely want to vet who you're talking to. Um, but at the same time, I think it's about credibility. I think it's about showing people that care about your product that we're the real deal. Um, you know, there's a lot of white noise uh, on social media. And so to stand out to those people, but um, more and more tools are available to kind of focus in on, on uh, customers that, that, you know, might be more interested in your product specifically. You know, how are you targeting those, those people and those sites initially? Well, that kind of gets into some of the, uh, some of the unique aspects of how we do our business. Um, and that's, you know, I think that's probably one of the main aspects of the e-commerce business that we kind of keep close to our chest in terms of, you know, the actual ways that we engage with customers um, and vet those customers. Um, but it's, you know, credibility is important and, and really trying to figure out who your audience is and, um, you know, kind of how interested they are in your product. But the fact that that's kind of your secret sauce or one of them le makes me think that that's real important. Uh, obviously, yeah. kind of strategies to target the right people, um, is probably first and foremost. And I guess that comes along with really knowing uh, what types of people you are trying to engage with. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, you know, that is probably the most valuable aspect of the information side of our business. Uh, and I think that, you know, um, kind of pinging, you know, hey, how, do, how does this uh, category react? How does this category react? You know, we're, we're always just, it's, it's all about uh, data analysis. And, you know, we've got a very um, picturesque product. We've got a lot of like cool visuals, um, but on the, uh, on the other side of it is a lot of, you know, analytics and really kind of looking deeper into um, who's engaging with what we're doing and, and you know, how they're reacting. And yeah. So can you tell me about some of the, the data that, you, that you're interested in? Yeah, so I mean, just like any other business, you wanna see how many people you talk to and how many of them bought, right? I mean, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty simple when you boil it down to that. Um, but you know, right now, especially, I mean, everything's kind of up in the air, right? We've had a major swing. We've got a whole bunch of different drivers um, for our consumers, uh, including but not limited to you know, food shortages at some time. So um, kind of pivoting and figuring out, hey, what's going on now? You know, there was kind of a reset in terms of online shopping where a person who may not have ever been interested in it is engaging now. And then we've got to see, okay, what do they do? So I think, you know, what happened early on is that there was just this big rush, right? Everybody just wanted to buy, buy, buy. Um, and then now what we're seeing, so volume was high, obviously, and it was, you uh, um, kind of more nebulous in terms of who it was. Um, but then as we move in into the winter now, you know, people have realized, okay, e-commerce e is a fantastic way for me to get great product overnight to my door. So we're seeing kind of a change in that where people are starting to step back, reevaluate and uh, come back with fantastic questions just in terms of quality and all that. So, I mean, why does a consumer buy from your site 
or just through any e-commerce versus a traditional channel? I think that um, convenience would be an obvious answer. Um, you know, I think that uh, getting a unique product, you know, um, a lot of retailers, when you go into retailers and we, you know, we've got amazing retail partners who um, have really, really good employees that, you know, know their product and can engage with the customer. But as a general rule, I think that there's been kind of a um, retreat from interaction at places like the seafood counter and the meat counter um, where a customer, you know, back in the day might know their butcher, they might know their fishmonger and, and he might tell them, Hey, Thursdays, I'm getting, you know, my cod comes in Thursday. So be here. Um, and there's been kind of a movement away from that to the point where um, my personal opinion is that, you know, I think a lot of people go to a fish counter in a, in a retailer and there's trepidation and kind of not as much education. And so it can be slightly intimidating. You know, for instance, um, how much of that piece of salmon do I need? What does a pound look like? You know, um, what is what is that? Uh, what does sustainable mean or Copper River or all these different kind of, you know, really all you have for information in the fish counter is a little tag unless you can actually get into a conversation with the fishmonger or the or the butcher. And so I think that um, an online sale offers time to think. It offers time to do some research. Um, it offers products that are, uh, you know, well explained and, uh, you know, ostensibly very different from a lot of what you can get in, a, in your general grocery store. And so it offers a new opportunity for a guy or, or a woman who, who maybe wants to grill and wants to impress the neighbors, you know, um, am I going to go to my local grocery store and hope that they've got what, you know, something that's really going to wow them? Or am I going to go online, take a little time and maybe end up with like some Wagyu steaks? you know, something really different and really cool that maybe, you know, my neighbor can't get, <laughs> you know, and then leave the grill hero, you know? So I think that there's, there's a lot of different um, things, but ultimately it gives people the time to kind of mull it over, do the research and get a product that really fits their needs. I mean, I look at your platform. So you're marketing through e-commerce. So directly to the consumer, you're really using social media to connect with that consumer. Uh, you've got, a lot of data that you use to inform your decision making. On the execution side, it's a beautiful product, packaged beautifully. We'll talk maybe a little bit about packaging, but you mentioned the importance of that. Execution is important, quality is important. And these, these things to me are all about, in a nutshell, embracing sophisticated marketing strategies to try and engage the consumer. Yeah, yep, exactly. And, you know, the thing that, that I also love about this, Anderson, is you are not classically trained in any of these techniques. So, I mean, I'm really impressed that you've been able to acquire this skill set and knowledge and you're applying what I think are really, you know, in a lot of ways out of the box thinking definitely for this sector. And I guess the message that I kind of take away is, um, you no, you do not need a Harvard degree to execute this strategy. Uh, a smart guy I know named Dave Mergle once said, "All you need is passion," and uh, and I think, and I think that that in my case has always been the case. As you know, I've been in the I've been doing stuff with seafood since I was you know knee high to a grasshopper. So for me, that is kind of what drives all of this. Um, is just passion. You know, I'm passionate about the industry. I'm passionate about the products. Um, it's interesting to me. It drives me, and so that's why I kind of probably ended up where I ended up. But yeah, I mean, I think we need to think outside the box um, as much as possible and just think um, instead of just boxing everything in and trying to take these like, edge, you know, these things that could be, you know, kind of archaic um, theories, we need to just look at our consumer and really speak to them and like be able to pivot, right? Like as, I mean, look at this spring, right? <laughs> it's like, okay, we're doing this. Okay, next, in the next three days, we need to pivot, you know, and so um having that flexibility is, uh, is really important. I mean, when you do any, uh, hear any or see any marketing in this sector, it's usually either these, you know, shots of nice dishes that a chef has produced or it's sustainability. As, and are those important parts of your platform or what do you, from a content and sort of identity perspective, what do you focus in on? Yeah, I think for us, you know, people like, uh, like for the king crab, our, our product has a wow factor, right? It's the largest that you can get. 
And so um, kind of like I mentioned, like the grill hero uh, before, I think that some of this is about that wow factor. It's about bringing something that, that you can't just find at your regular grocery store. Yeah, you can find king crab, but Lord knows what sizing it'll be or where it's from. And so if you really want to make that party special, that's kind of where we come in, you know? And um, so I think it's a different, it's, you know, we're not speaking to people who just want to eat. We're, we're speaking to people who want to have an experience. Um, and, and a lot of that has to do with family and a lot of it has to do with friends. And, and so for us, um, speaking to those people, I think it's important to kind of show those you know, lifestyle situations and like, you know, look at this product. It's big. It's beautiful. Here's a, here's a great dish, but maybe here's a whole table of great dishes with 14 people at it, having a fantastic time. And again, your answer, you, 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 not once did I hear you mention the word sustainability. Everyone within the sector strongly believes in uh, all these sustainability attributes and marketing on sustainability, but I'm not sure how much that resonates with the consumer. And I noticed that you didn't mention that uh, it was more about product and the role it plays as an experience. Yeah, absolutely. The thing about uh, Alaska king crab is that it is very sustainable. It's super highly regulated and the quotas are going down every year, you know? So, <laughs> so we do have that story and, and um, it is a, you know, it's a great product from that aspect. And that's really important to us and to me, especially as just a adamant fish nerd and, and person who, who wants to see the, um, the larger seafood industry continue to be sustainable. Um, but I don't know, you know, we have, we have tons of customers who have fantastic questions about sustainability and where does this come from and what are the implications, et cetera. Um, but it's certainly not even close to the, the large uh, group, you know? Um, and so we've got the information. We love to answer the questions and we, you know, in our back pocket, we've got all that, uh, you know, real sustainability. Um, but we find that our customer really is generally more interested in just the size, the quality and that, and they're not really getting down to those um, details with king crab. Competitors. Do you think about competitors? If so, who are your competitors? Is it other e-commerce sites? Is it other channels like the traditional retailer? I mean, or do you not really think about competitors? Um, well, I would, I think you would be, you, you always need to think about your competitors, right? But for us, we are just a, um, we're just moving forward. We're a freight train. You know, it's, it's like, we do what we do and we're going to make it the absolute best that we can. Um, you know, we love to see competition in the market, right? It means that more people are getting great food. Um, but for us, it's just important to really convey what we, what we want to on our site and just make sure that visually and the product and everything is tied up. And then I think that um, it kind of figures itself out, you know, when you're doing your absolute best and you're giving 110% and you're getting the best product and you're giving the great customer service and the website's fantastic. Um, it all just kind of figures itself out and the consumer goes with who they want to go with. Makes sense. Well, a lot of great insightful uh, comments and thoughts, Anderson, really impressed with what you've created. I think it's uh, quite revolutionary in this sector. We can all learn a lot from you. Uh, and I appreciate your time today. This has been Anderson Witherell, Director of E-Commerce Fulfillment and Marketing with the Fish Guys, specifically in charge of alaskankingcrab.com. So check them out. Anderson, thanks again. Uh, great job. Thanks, Dave. Great to talk with you. Thank you.